Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about DAI that stands for Dynamic ARP Inspection. And this uh, idea is very important from network security point of view. And this is actually based on ARP, uh, the idea of ARP that is Address Resolution Protocol. So before discussing this DAI, let's briefly discuss about ARP, uh, the Address Resolution Protocol. Now the address resolution protocol is a protocol which maps an IP address to the MAC address. So IP address is a 32 bits logical address and MAC address is a 48 bits physical address. And this is the protocol which helps us to find out the MAC address if we have the IP address. And we use this normally, for example, if this is the user, we configure maybe IP address as well as the default gateway. So default gateway is this router and we don't configure the MAC address. It means this user needs the MAC address as well to send the data to the network interface card, maybe the card or the MAC address, which is there. So for that, this user can use the ARP protocol to find out the MAC address of this router. And the hosts as well as the router maintain this ARP table in their database. So once they have learned by using this ARP protocol, some of the uh, MAC addresses. So they store that information in their ARP table. And if we are using Windows machine, then we can use this command that is ARP minus A. So by using this command, you can see in your computers that for every IP address, they have also noted the corresponding MAC address. In the same way, if we have a router, so on the router as well, we can use this command to look into the IP address as well as the corresponding MAC address. And they maintain this database to forward the traffic, which is uh, supposed to go to particular IP address. Now this R, so R uh, find out the MAC address and this uh, process actually, it takes two messages. So ARP actually includes two messages and one of the messages is ARP request and the second message is ARP reply message. And this ARP request message, what happens, for example, this user has sent some information to this default gateway and that information or that data has to be sent to some of the users on the right hand side. But now this router only knows the IP address, but this router does not have the information about the MAC address of that particular computer. So in that case, this router will make or it will generate an RP request message. And in this request message, it will say that I have some data to be sent to this IP address. And if this IP address is your IP address, then please reply with your MAC address. So this question or this ARP request message will be sent to all the nodes on that on the segment on the subnet so for example in this case we have three computers all of them has received the same message now as per as per protocol only that specific computer will reply back whose ip address is the ip address which has been asked in this message so these three computers will have, of course, different IP address. So only we are expecting the reply from the legitimate user. So now the part in the ARP reply message, only user who has got this IP address will respond. So for example, we say that this is the user who has got this IP address. So this user will respond back. Rest of the users will just ignore that message. So that user will send a reply message and in that reply message it will say that yes this is my IP address and this is my MAC address and once they both have the IP as well as MAC address they can send and receive data from each other so all good so we designed the protocol it's working fine we have both IP as well as MAC address but situation is not always good there is one thing in this protocol so that is, uh, that is uh, actually ARP reply message. We call it graded pages uh, ARP messages. And the purpose or the use of that message is that, for example, in the network, if some of the user, uh, if the host uh, actually changes its MAC address, but it's, it's still using the same IP address. So maybe for example, this user has changed the MAC address. 
So now this user can inform all the other nodes on the network about this change. It means this user can generate a message that's our reply and that message will say yes this is my MAC address, this is my IP address sorry and this is maybe maybe this is my new MAC address. And now this information will be broadcast to all the nodes on the on the network and the same so in response to that message these all nodes on the network will update their ARP table. If you remember that ARP table we have the IP address and the corresponding MAC address. Now they will update with respect to the new message in which this user might have changed its MAC address. So they all updated this. So that's good because if someone is changing its uh, MAC address this good that protocol supports that that um, even though no one is asking for that but they can send this uh, great you uh, so great way just our message to to all the nodes on the networks so this is this is the message and uh, now this is somehow the weak point in this protocol so let's suppose that there is some hacker and he this hacker just plug in uh, plug uh, plugs in its computer on the on uh, using some switch port and maybe this hacker can generate a message in that message that hacker can claim that this 192.168.10.10 is my IP address and then in that message this hacker can also send its own MAC address and it can pretend that this is my IP address but in reality this IP address actually belongs to this user. Now once we have done this or once this hacker has done this every user so this information will be sent to every node on the network and every node will change its ARP table. So now, yes, IP address is being used of this PC, but corresponding MAC address is, is sent by this user claiming that this is my IP address. So they all have changed the MAC address or the MAC entries there. And this actually attack from the hacker is known as ARP poisoning or sometimes ARP spoofing attack. So what happens due to this act or due to this action from the hacker, everyone has changed their ARP table there. And now after that point, if this router will receive some information to be sent to this user. So now due to different entry in the ARP table, this router will forward that information to the hacker. Because of, the, because of the wrong entry there. So now this information will move to the uh, hacker and then hacker can send a copy of that information to the original user. So original user will also be receiving the copy but there will be some person in the middle who will be receiving all the information. So this is also known as man in the middle attack and this is alarming situation for uh, from a network, network security point of view. And now we need some protocol or some tricks to address this issue. So this address, this, this issue can be addressed using DHCP snooping binding table. So we discussed this DHCP snooping binding table in DHCP um, snooping video. But this DHCP snooping binding table, for example, this is a table here. And in this table, we record or the switch records so switch records the MAC addresses, IP addresses, VLAN as well as interfaces. So in this, in this table, the switch will keep a record of the MAC addresses as well as the corresponding IP addresses which has been assigned to, to, the, to the users. So during the DHCP process, for example, initially this hacker was, for example, this hacker was no, this, this hacker was not there and every legitimate user received an IP address using DHCP protocol. So this user also received an IP address, this user received, and this user also received. So they all received the IP addresses and this request was flowing through this, uh, through this switch and this was sent to some legitimate DHCP server. So during that process, the switch recorded all the information that which IP address is going to which computer and what is the MAC address of that computer. And it created this DHCP snooping binding table. It means now 
this which has all the record of legitimate are the legal uh, users their MAC addresses and the IP addresses and once we have this thing and then for example this hacker comes into scene and this hacker generates the message yes this is my IP address and this is my MAC address but in reality this is the IP address and this is the MAC address so when the hacker will generate this message and when this message will come to this switch switch will actually compare this request or the contents in this message with the entries in this DHCP snooping binding table and when it will look into this binding table it will it will see or it will realize that this IP address basically belongs to this MAC address so it will have a doubt on this message and of course this switch will discard the message which will which is actually attack from this hacker so switch will discard it and this will be done with the help of this DHCP snooping binding table and for that we need to activate this dynamic ARP inspection so this dynamic ARP inspection actually uses this one but if the clients are not using maybe DHCP maybe they are using a static IP address in that case we can use this ARP ACL so an ARP ACL as well we will have a table where MAC, where the IP address and the corresponding MAC addresses will be there and so it will be checking from that ARP ACL. So that's interesting feature which we can enable on the switches. And now for complete nets, let's look at the commands which we will be using in Cisco Packet Tracer to enable that feature. So for that, first of all, we need maybe this uh, DHCP snooping binding table and now to create DHCP snooping bounding table, we will use the commands which we used when uh, configuring this DHCP snooping on the switches. So this is commands to enable DHCP snooping and this is VLAN where we want to use this one. And then we can maybe enable or we can make uh, actually by these commands, by these commands, these all ports of the switch will be classified as untrusted port it means untrusted ports mean, means we can start monitoring the these all messages on these ports but we can or we must make one of the ports of the switch which is connected with the DHCP server as a trusted port and for that for that we use we, we go to that particular interface and then we use this command by which that port will be considered the trusted port and then we can have this DHCP snooping binding table with this one and then we can activate this DAI feature using IP ARP inspection command and then this is the VLAN information so this number can be any number so VLAN 1, VLAN 2, VLAN 3 so the number of VLAN where we want to implement that one and then we can also make uh, one of the interfaces as the uh, trusted interface so for that one this will be the command which we will be using in Cisco Packet Tracer and finally to verify the configuration we can use this show IP IP inspection command. So this will be actually this this uh, this will be privilege level command so let's try it so a privilege we will use this one. So anyway this is the end for uh, today's video and uh, we will see the demonstration of this in Cisco Packet Tracer and this video was a bit helpful for you and thank you very much i hope that i hope like that and thank you thank you very much for your time and hope to see you in some other video thank you